Looking further afield now, the Nerve Centre, through their Creative Centenaries website, have been to the forefront in developing and delivering a huge range of resources that are being used in educational settings and for further teaching of this period in our history. We're delighted to have Niall Kerr with us to talk through some of those resources and how they can be accessed for future use. Over to you, Niall. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Niall Kerr from the Nerve Centre and I'm going to talk to you today about the Creative Centenaries project. I want to say a thank you to, to David Robinson and to Belfast City Council for, for asking us to contribute today. Uh, we've worked quite closely with David and his team over the years throughout the decade of Centenaries and really, really delighted to be able to, to take part in this event. Uh, Creative Centenaries, for those who don't know, is a project led by the Nerve Centre based in Derry. And Creative Centenaries exists to provide information, resource and content about the Decade of Centenaries available to as many people as possible. And for us, what we've tried to do with, with, with Creative Centenaries is to use new ways of exploring the past and to help new and, and more people to engage with the content in different ways, some of which I'll touch upon through this presentation. So for us, the Decade of Centenaries, as, as for everyone else, as we know, it was a succession of events that unfolded across a 10-year period that would redefine the island of Ireland and its people forever. So it was an opportunity to reflect, to learn about our past, and to better inform people about our present, and ultimately about, then about our future and how we can have some of those conversations. So we set out to create a project that would be a, a one-stop shop for the decade of centenaries and what that meant in Northern Ireland and how we could help new audiences to engage with it in new ways. And obviously it's such a defining period in our, in our, in our shared and collective memory and, and history, but it's also a complicated time, a complicated period and at times difficult to understand for some audiences. There, there were obvious access points for, um, for the uninitiated uh, and it might have seemed like a difficult moment in time to understand uh, or, or, or to find a way through which they could engage to learn about it and to have a say. Uh, so we tried to make it as accessible as possible for as many people as possible. So Creative Centenaries established a way to act as a portal of information uh, for of, of events, news and resource around the decade and to bring together uh, the different organizations and groups out there who were working in this space and to share that learning and to share that expertise. So a hub website was, was one of the first things that we set out to develop that would act as that one-stop shop for young and old, for, for new audiences or existing. And it aimed to shine a light on the work and also to act as a place um, that through which Creative Centenaries could share its own work and its own developments over, over that period of time as well. So I'll, I'll quickly run through just that website and some of what it aims to do. So there are interactive timelines that detail each year from 1912 through 1922, 23, uh, and some of the key significant moments from the decade. Uh, and these can be used as a starting point in the classroom or potentially to give information and overview uh, to some of the events from that time frame for different audiences. There is on this day content that mines archives and newspapers to, to represent the past in the modern day. Blog entries from, from historians, from academics, from PhD students and others are, are able then to expand upon some of those topics and really delve into what they meant and offer personal viewpoints. There are events listed throughout the website that draw attention to and highlight what's going on across the country. Uh, and to try and get more and more and new people to to take part and to engage, and then perhaps most significantly, and I think the most used section of the website is our resources section, from where we can highlight all of the content that exists from organisations and groups across Northern Ireland, across Ireland and beyond, and also a, um, a place through which we can highlight some of the work that we've been involved in and some of the work that we've developed including our, our graphic novel series. Uh, and this has been one of our most successful undertakings through the Creative Centenaries project. Uh, they are a series of curriculum linked graphic novels exploring real people and real events from throughout the decade of centenaries. 
So starting off there with Winifred Carney and Bill McFadden, uh, through to Lily London Derry, Francis Ledwich, Alice Milligan, James Craig and Michael Collins more recently. And these have been designed and, and developed to support the curriculum, primarily at Key Stage 3 in Northern Ireland, and largely to help younger audiences and new audiences to, to see the past in a new way and to help them you know, to understand the, the context of what was going on at that time, almost through a modern lens. And it also helps to bridge the understanding of, of events between different communities. So these stories are all printed back to back. And the idea there is that someone who may not have heard or learned about one of the stories uh, is able then through the process of having that in their hands to, to broaden their, their understanding about the period. Uh, each of the graphic novels also has background information and curriculum like tasks uh, included within each of the stories. And these encourage the use of, of creativity and digital, digital literacy as tools for, for young people and people of all ages to respond to, to what they're seeing, to respond to this history and, and to develop their own creative responses around what that means to them. And such has been the, the success and, and demand for these stories that we've also found them being used in an adult and community education as well. And upwards of 200,000 plus um, copies of these comics have now been printed. They're, they're such a successful tool in engaging uh, around this time frame uh, for museums, for libraries, for heritage institutions and community and education settings right across Ireland. And I'm really pleased today um, to be able to show off some of the artwork from, from a brand new graphic novel, which is still in development. We're hoping to launch this next few weeks. And it's thanks to, to shared history funding uh, from the NIO and from the National Lottery Heritage Fund that we're bringing this story to life. And it's a story that makes use of archive institutions and content from across the island, and also encourages people to go and visit those places and to see what's possible within them. So the story is based around a young girl who finds an image from the border that's linked to her family, uh, an historical image, and then goes off on a voyage of discovery to find out more about it, to find out more about that time, and to uncover what was happening in Ireland in the early 1920s. So firstly, uh, her, her voyage takes her to, to Prony uh, in Belfast, the Public Record Office in Belfast which is able to view and handle documents and material from that time of partition. And then those times are then brought to life through artistic representations of the period. Secondly, she goes to the Ulster Museum in Belfast, where through the Modern History Gallery is able to learn more about, about pogroms, about shipyard expulsions, and, and ultimately, as you can see from the page on the right there, about the opening of Parliament at, at Belfast City Hall. And, and bring in that period uh, of time to life as well. And then finally goes to the National Library of Ireland in Dublin. And this is where she's able to view content linked to the Anglo-Irish Treaty, to the Civil War and all of the events going on at that time. And it's, the story is a way of showing the different types of content that exists across the island to draw attention to it. And as I said before, also encouraging people to go and visit for themselves. Uh, and these are all institutions that are accessible to the public and we wanted to draw attention to that and uh, and encourage people to understand what exists out there. So it'll also be a resource that has educational tasks and materials uh, linked to the curriculum that can be used in the classroom and beyond as well. And this resource will be available to, to view, to download and to access from the Creative Centenaries website in the coming weeks as are all the other materials that I've mentioned today as well. I would encourage anyone who is undertaking any learning or, or wants to know more about what's happening within the Decade of Centenaries or around the Decade of Centenaries within Northern Ireland to, to visit the URL on the website, on the, on the screen there, so creativecentenaries.org, or to get in touch with us for any more information or to access any of this content again. Uh, and again, thank you to, to David and his team, to Belfast City Council for allowing us the opportunity to speak today and I hope you find that a useful journey through the Creative Centenaries project.